Hi everybody, I'm Daryl Cagle and this is the Cagle Cast, where we're all about political cartoons. Well, last week we did an episode about Vladimir Putin, Vladimir Putin Part 2, and we had a lot of fun doing it and we went long and we got actually a whole extra episode out of it. And that's what we're going to do today. Poor Taylor Jones got a little shorted on that episode. I'm going to start with a bunch of Taylor's cartoons and a few of the new Wagner versus Putin cartoons that came in after that because we did that just before the the Wagner Rebellion. So I thought I would throw in some of the newest Wagner cartoons so we get caught up on Putin. And then the rest of the episode, we're going to hear a more freewheeling conversation, which of course goes to artificial intelligence because, uh, you know, that's what's on all the cartoonists' minds. Taylor Jones is great fun. And uh, this is Taylor's Evgeny Prigozhin cartoon where he looks like a raccoon. And I think this is just hilarious. This is one that I did. You know, the Russian flag that has this two-headed eagle on it I think is pretty crazy I like this two-headed eagle and of course now that there is all of this obvious infighting that two-headed eagle makes a whole lot more sense this is one that I did with Prigozhin and Belarus president Alexander Lukashenko and Lukashenko says hey Prigozhin you and your Wagner army are welcome to stay in Belarus so long as you keep wearing that t-shirt the target t-shirt Here's one by Patrick Chapat, our Swiss cartoonist, with no words, and Putin, who looks a little bit like Johnny Carson here, is holding his puppet strings over Prigozhin, who is not cooperating well, and, and Putin's getting all tangled up. And here's one from John Darko that really did very well with the editors. Putin in his Z tank with his uh, backfiring tank having some trouble on him. And uh, he says, it's getting so you can't commit an act of aggression and not have it backfire. This is one from our Ukrainian cartoonist, Vladimir Kazanevsky, with balloons over the Kremlin, uh, Prigozhin and Putin about to poke each other with needles. Here is Rick McKee from Florida drawing uh, Putin, who's not looking like much of a strong man, and another backfiring tank by Rivers. Here's our cartoonist from Slovakia, Martin Sudovich and Prigozhin, and Putin fighting it out in the blood. We're going to go to the extra conversation that happened on our last episode, and we just get to be more freewheeling and chat. Maybe that's what this podcast should be going forward, just a lot more freewheeling chat. So I'm going to think about that, see if I can do a little less structure and have a little more fun. Uh, oh, they're all fun. So, hey, thank you for coming. And here's our episode that ran long and was actually better than the part that didn't run long. So uh, enjoy, and I will see you next week. We'll probably do the Supreme Court because that's so disturbing. We'll see what's disturbing next week. Thanks. So, Taylor, here you've got Putin, much like President Bush reading the book to the kids as 9-11 happened. Here you've got Putin with Good Night Freedom, Good Night Ukraine, reading a book to the school kids in Russia. That's a, uh, that's a lovely drawing and a lovely metaphor. Well, well, thank you. This was for the Hoover Institution. They are probably, I mean, uh, best known for their Hoover archive, where they're very very, it's, a, it's, it's, I guess, the world's biggest archive outside of Russia for uh, all kinds of Soviet uh, memorabilia, uh, writings, uh, things from dissidents, all that stuff. They've got all that at the Hoover Institution. And, and, and of course, part of one of the Hoover fellows, I guess he's, I'm not sure if he's still alive or very, very old, but one of uh, a, a famous American historian of Russia. Uh, and this was for an article either by him or about him. Um, and, uh, the thing is that, um, if, if you go back to that cartoon for a second, Daryl, uh, uh, I, you know, that could be taken as almost, it's certainly not meant to be pro Putin, but of course what he's doing is it, uh, part of the sto story was saying how, uh, uh, Russia is trying to, um, is, is very strongly indoctrinated, indoctrinating its young children about the. The, the glorious adventure that is the, uh, the um, well, they don't call it a war. What do they call it in Ukraine um, that the Russians, uh, uh, um, and, and um, but, you know, somebody could look at this and take it the wrong way, I would think, you know, and think that uh, it is almost in, in favor 
of Russia. And uh, no, 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 I can't. No, no. I can't. Okay, think. good. T- Taylor, Taylor, was this a reference to Gorilla as a parent of young children? That's the only thing that I thought right moon. away. That classic book. Good night, 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 night. Yeah, that's a great book. Thank you. Well, I mean, but good night, Ukraine, with an explosion under mm-hmm. it that makes you not really very enthusiastic for Putin. <laughs> So here's a wonderful cartoon with uh, teenager y sullen Putin in his room with uh, keep out signs on the door. And this is this just has, has so much character and it's so much fun. You've got Boris and <laughs> Natasha from Bullwinkle on a poster on the wall. It's hilarious. Well, you know, uh, uh, of course, that's, the, that's back in Putin's more spelt day. Uh, so he, had, he was kind of raw boned then. And. Uh, uh, but thank you. Um, uh, you know, he, he has, Putin has lent himself in so many ways in terms of caricature uh, to, to, to all of us. And, uh, you know, it's, um, uh, he's always fun to draw. Uh, I think he's gotten harder to caricature because he's, um, because he's kind of puffed out. Uh, it's a different look. And, and there are some cartoonists that, that really handle that really well, such as Ed Wexler. He's really got the, uh, the puffy yeah. Putin down. Uh, flat. Yeah. Perfectly. That's a wonderful cartoon. I enjoyed that. I like the ones that have so much character. And here you're drawing that crazy church guy and the pussy riot people being crucified. And, uh, you know, any crucifixion, this cartoon's not going to get printed. But well, it, uh, it it's a wonderful cartoon. Yeah. This is for this is for the, port, the newspaper in Puerto Rico. And down there, you had what I had to be careful of was things that might seem critical of the Catholic church. But otherwise, you know, whether it's fundamentalist Protestants or Russian Orthodox, they were quite, uh, and frankly, you could be, uh, well, you could, you could be a little, um, you could be a little edgier regarding Israel that, uh, in, in a way would be as well. Yes, this is a religion and blood, Daryl, so I guess no, no go. And crucifixion. Oh, you've so. got blood in there too. Oh, no. <laughs> Double win. The, the period- uh, I mean, uh, you, by the way, that was done. That was done in the first round of sanctions against uh, Putin regarding Ukraine back in what 2014. But it turns out, what all what all the problems, you know, it still works today because despite all the problems Russia's having and how they're doing so poorly in the war, apparently, from what I've read, the sanctions aren't having much of a dent. And in fact, there was a story in the New York Times today where both Boeing and Airbus in Europe, Europe, despite sanctions, are supplying all kinds of parts and what have you to their commercial airline industry. Sanctions generally don't seem to work for the most, no matter who you will, you know, they, they haven't brought Iran to its heels. They, 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 it seems like, a, in some ways, a terrible waste of time. It's more done for, it makes it look like we're doing something when uh, uh, perhaps we could be doing something more effectively. I think giving the sanctions enough teeth for them to be effective is just so difficult and unpleasant that yeah. they don't do that. Right. They make it really work, then they hurt us as well. Here's another lovely cartoon from you, Taylor. You've got uh, Putin the snake, and he's uh, devouring and swallowing Ukraine, and he thinks, takes a while, but I always finish my supper. Well, I've had, I've had, uh, I've, I've portrayed Putin as, I think, eight or nine different animals. And uh, he just lends himself to that. Uh, I know that, I forget whether it was, I think it was you, you, who had, uh, uh, you had um, uh, uh, Putin as the wolf in the China shop. And he just sort yep. of lends himself to, uh, to that kind of exaggeration. He does. The Wonderful cartoon. Beautiful. Like, what? Yeah. Really? Here's another wonderful one. You've got uh, leopard Putin, and he's coming up on all of the the critters. What 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 are those critters? Well, you got gnus, wildebeest, or gnus. Those are gnus. wildebeest <laughs> and gnus. Same thing. Labeled well, the, the Baltics, thing. Donetsk, Ukraine, Belarus, Moldova, and the storybook says the leopard closely evaluates the herd of gnus seeking to identify the weakest animal, one with an injury or perhaps a young calf. The leopard then tries to separate this new from the rest of the herd so it can go in for a quick kill. <laughs> That's a lovely cartoon. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, I, 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 great. I, I've, uh, um, uh, I watch a lot of nature programs. <laughs> I can see that. 
the way he, he draws the, the, the leopard with it's shiny or on his back. And well, thank great. You. Just great. It was fun. It was fun to do. Yeah. Well, it's great fun, this cartoon. Uh, but, um, uh, I, 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 you know, I've, this is the third podcast I've been, uh, Daryl has been nice enough to invite me in. And uh, uh, this was, a, I think, a, an especially fun one. And okay. informative. I never, and informative. Okay. He asked me before, but but I didn't dare. But so didn't now he dare. asked me for the second time. I said, "Let's give it a try." Very <laughs> good. Well, you know, there, uh, there are less... kind enough to keep me going. <laughs> there are less less topics I can use the international guys for uh, because you don't draw as many cartoons about the other topics we've been doing. But um, I would like to get you guys both on more, and uh, we'll do more. Maybe we'll I... maybe we will do those Middle East ones. I try to hear my. I try to hear more from the 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 circumstances you American cartoonists work in, compared to what I'm used in Europe, but it didn't get off the ground and 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 maybe it's it's something to talk about later. I mean, those were great things to talk about when we were in France with everybody, and uh, on the train and and being there and we had we had really nice discussions about. Well, I, I can't remember whether it was Yost or you uh, mentioning that you talked about meeting with, uh, I guess it was you, Yost, talking about uh, a dinner with your uh, with editors and the yeah, and yeah. Breakfast. cartoonists. But were these, all, were these all cartoonists for one paper or are these a bunch of cartoonists? Yeah, they were, every paper in Holland has one or two or wow. sometimes three cartoonists. That's, and um, that's, they take pride in having these guys well, and they also take pride in letting these guys draw what they want mm. to draw because that makes the voice personal. Yeah. And as you read columns, you like a columnist who has his personal voice and his personal, uh, uh, personal well, things to say. And, and, uh, and that's what they, as, it is my experience, you know. Uh, I mean, uh, Yup has different experiences, but I worked for this paper for 40 years now. And uh, they have a tradition. My predecessor worked for 50 years at this paper. And sometimes we really have discussions with the chief editor. And, well, not really, but sometimes it looks like a fight. And then I know he can, he can sack me whenever he wants to. But usually it goes in the open and also in the paper is written about mm -hmm. it. So I get the support of many readers. And they write letters, and, and those letters are published also in the paper. So it's more like a big community, and that is also the strength of the paper. Well, you know, and uh, I think also in Europe, the partners are much more appreciated and, and much more honored as well than in, in, in the United States. If That's you true. Know, you know, when I, I think so. during, during the years I, I, I did, I was never an employee of the newspaper in Puerto Rico, but I, I uh, uh, did work for them on a freelance basis a lot uh, for 30 yeah. years, including the yeah. time for about 10 years where I was doing three cartoons a week for them. But they, or they, they yeah. all that time, they already had a cartoonist and they would use other cartoons, uh, just this other cartoonist work as well. Now, I don't mean syndicated stuff, just who they, someone would come in. Uh, oh, yeah, we'll use this cartoon. I think in Latin America, too, of course, Latin American newspapers are having the same problems that American newspapers are. And in fact, I was canned for that reason because they just didn't have the funding anymore. But um, um, mm -hmm. they, and, and, you know, the thing is, something that isn't done in the U.S. Uh, for the most part is that they, they, have, they would have cartoons throughout the newspaper. They would, you know, the, uh, uh, cartoons and caricatures, not just confined and of course, often on the on the front page. Now, I guess in New York, the um, New York Observer would did that, but that's just not that's not been an American thing since since oh my goodness, you would you would know the car, the cartoonist long gone from the Des Moines Register, uh, whose cartoons appeared on the fir, on the front page, or or did his successor Daryl? Um, I can't. I, Brian I can't, Brian Duffy. Duffy is this is this appearing on the front page because that that was a tradition mm -hmm. in the Des Moines Register in you know, Iowa. But um, uh, that's something that, you know, generally editorial cartoons have been confined to the editorial page and then syndicated yeah. work to the op-ed page. But in Latin America, mm -hmm. 
there's a lot more. There's there's it, and is that true? Is that true in Holland and elsewhere in Europe too? Where you might see it all, you know, cartoons all over the the, the news. No, 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 no. It's not not that. Uh, no, it's not that cover. Not everywhere in the paper. Mm -hmm. It's it's usually confined to the op-ed page. Okay. But I I I did three a week, and my colleague did also three a week. So we did it together, and uh, we had our own voice. And and yeah. uh, and um, uh, well, most of the papers, most most of the national papers, anyway, in the Netherlands uh, have this situation, and most of them are very careful with their with their cartoonists and and. Uh, and they are really appreciated and also by the readers because they tell us we are part of the face of our papers. That's what they literally tell us. Mm -hmm. So they won't, don't want to lose us and, and our, and well, maybe we draw a bit along the lines of the paper. I, I think it is. That's why we work there for so long. But they leave us. And also if there's discussion about a cartoon, who cares? It's an opinion page. It's an op-ed page. So there is supposed to be discussion. Right. Let me tell a, a little experience I had in this respect. You, I was uh, while while I was... you tell us your experience, I'm going to bring back one of your cartoons that got skipped by accident. And uh, this is a wonderful oh, cartoon. Really? Would, would they put the, the price cap yeah, on Putin's the... oil? Um, and I guess this is kind of an optimistic cartoon thinking that price cap would make more of a difference than it seems to have made. But I just thought this yes. cartoon was great. Keep the lid firmly closed. That's fun. Um, That's right. Yeah. Yeah. But so I, you were uh, saying. Yes. Because of the experience, uh, because I was sick some time ago by uh, had parole by the, the editor and uh, they had to take, she had to take me back because the, the, the the readers wanted the, didn't want it this way, and they wanted wow. me back in the, in the paper. But uh, I left uh, in the end. I left because of the, that's no way of working together. But uh, I still uh, worked there for a year, and then I could uh, look for another job, and I found one. Ben in Amsterdam, for instance. The and the, and the also, the, in, 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 in several times it occurs that the cartoon is used. On the front page, when it's a special uh, issue or a, or a special uh, occasion, because there are no photos there, then they, they can use it. They did. So it is possible to get on the front page. But there really it's hard at the moment for you or for American cartoonists, because a lot of the cartoonists uh, are being sick and have no possibilities anymore to go anywhere. And uh, that's because of the, the, uh, the, the, uh, different opinions in America that's come to wise out of each other. Well, we had the experience last year of the biggest American newspaper chain, Gannett, uh, deciding yeah. to drop editorial cartoons entirely in what was then about 400 papers out of about uh, 12, 1300 daily papers overall in America. So it was a very large percentage of the papers and it hit our syndicate very hard. A lot of uh, great papers that have been subscribing to us for 20 years just suddenly stopped printing editorial cartoons entirely oh, um, because uh, Gannett, uh, Gannett wanted to get away from having the left versus right stuff, the donkeys and the elephants. Yeah. They yeah. didn't want yeah. the friction between the left and the right, which is what they said yeah. was the reason they did this. They and they yeah. wanted the papers to have more of a local focus that didn't lend itself to left and right. And that's very frustrating. Uh, some of the Gannett papers stayed with us. Uh, Gannett papers in California and Florida, which is wonderful. And we love those papers and uh, they're very committed to editorial cartoons. But, you know, the hundreds of Gannett papers left. And that's uh, a great frustration for us. And we're seeing that in other papers for more for other reasons than Gannett. Um, a lot of papers are consolidating and you find that there'll be one paper in a little regional group that is the editorial staff of maybe two people for maybe six papers in this the area. And those other six papers may have little or no staff, maybe one reporter or two reporters, and the papers put together in another place. Uh, that's very 
very frustrating. Uh, there are some papers that are like ghost papers that exist with no employees. Um, and they're entirely put together by uh, another paper in the region. Uh, wow. I guess AI will be taking care of that before, before too long. <laughs> you know? I mean, AI, you know, imagine, I was thinking the other day, if a... Um, we had our second AI, AI cartoon. cartoon. Yes, really? that was submitted to us by Yos. Uh, I could dig that up if you want to see it. Yeah, I'd love to get that. Um, I, you know, I, I should say, I, I, I was thinking of, of doing a little extra, you know, like on the Bill Maher show, they've got this extra because they sit and talk some more. And I think I'll do that with this one. We'll, we'll do something extra. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> okay, so uh, here mm. is Yos's uh, oh. eye cartoon. I think this is hilarious, and I have no idea what, what you've written about in here. Um, no, no, I'll, t I'll tell well, you. I'll let, tell well, let you. me say that, it, that this is, okay, we, okay. we had one AI cartoon that we syndicated, and I'd love to syndicate this one too. I, th I think it's hilarious, depending on what you wrote in it. And sometime, there's going to be somebody who can't draw, who isn't a cartoonist, but who's a good writer and can get the AI to do stuff that goes with good writing. And then we're going to have a tough decision to make, which is, do we want to do that? Uh, until now, that has never happened. Um, but, but it could. Yeah, well, well I, up on the upper left side, you see in the, in the big letters, it says, uh, after Russia, now Iran, too, is chairman of the UN Human Rights Council. It, that is what it says on the left. And then on the right, it says, uh, I asked midlife, uh, midlife, midjourney. <laughs> <laughs> I asked midjourney, um, generate for me a big red cat with a Russian fur hat on and next to it, a black cat, Iranian cat with, a round, with round glasses and a white beard. Furthermore, 10 frightened white mice, all seated at a conference table with a UN logo on the wall. I thought that will be the cartoon. So I, I, I gave the, the submission and I got this back. So when I got this back, I looked at it and I thought, well, this isn't exactly what I meant. In fact, it's not at all what I meant <laughs> as, a, as a drawing. It wouldn't work. So I put the conclusion under there with uh, my, it, it's, it's some a portrait of myself. And I concluded, for the time being, I'll do it myself. <laughs> that's, that's great. That's great. I think it's and, very and, funny. You know, it's, I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, well, about well the, the, now the cats, were they, I mean, in, 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 I know that AI and these art programs, they can, you, you know, uh, you can just, uh, call up whatever things you want, and you get these. So yeah. were these? So these were these different cats. Were they sort of generated, yeah. or were they lifted uh, by the AI program to come out like that? I think they were. I, I think they were lifted in a, a global search, mm -hmm. and and for cats it's easy because there are right. so many cats on the internet. Yeah. They were lifted in a global <laughs> search, and the hats were put on by by Midjourney. And uh, by the by the the, the bot and uh, the the position mm -hmm. also, but in the end it was not anything that I could use yeah. for my cartoon. My time was up, so I I I <laughs> had no time to make another cartoon. <laughs> so I put this one in the paper with the the, the with the, the self portrait under. I think it's and, uh, I think it's funny, and I should say you know I talk a lot about cartoons we can't draw because editors don't want that stuff. But um, I don't talk that much about what editors really do want. And one thing that they seem to want in practice rather than what they say, but what they in practice show that they want is cats and dogs. You put yeah. cats and dogs in cartoons, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, the yeah. editors just yeah. love it, yeah. especially yeah. cats. Um, I had an idea yeah. one yeah. time that, uh, you know, maybe one of these cartoonists that's... Uh, writing to us that wants to be syndicated he's not quite good enough if he would draw just cats in all of his cartoons he would be our most popular cartoonist every cartoon just depicts everyone as a cat um 
I have suggested that to a couple of guys and they, I don't want to, uh, I thought it would be funny. It's crazy to yeah, look at the but, statistics and see when it's cats. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the problem is a bit, we have become political cartoonists. We want to say something with our cartoons and, and we want to stand and we want to have a standpoint and have a lot of humor to express that standpoint. I think that's what we are trying to do. Well, do you think but that, do you think I, that a cartoonist could not... decide to say all of the things he wants to say, but with the constraint that he has to use cats to say it? <laughs> well, there are, there are. Well, you, yeah, I could. I could. Daryl, you want yeah. me to just drop I remember an Australian cartoonist who used only animals. Huh? And, uh, and, it, and he expressed the real situation that was, in his opinion, over there in Australia. Well, and he was hugely popular. It, it's about 50 years ago. I don't know his name anymore. But I saw an album by him, and it was very good quality. Well, you know, Taylor does all these wonderful bird cartoons, and uh, yeah. I was suggesting to him that if he just did bird cartoons, <laughs> like I, I, I was well, suggesting I'm tempted, the cat. I'm tempted, Daryl. Uh, you know, I'll tell you, that, that cat in the middle there with the, the Iranian cat, Wherever that yeah. image came from, on a T-shirt, that would sell a ton of T-shirts, you know? Just that one <laughs> cat there, that third-looking imam cat. Yeah, but, but the other one with the orange uh, firefighter's helmet or something on the <laughs> right, you yeah. know? And uh, his looks are marvelous as well. Yeah, they could not. That's a good so cat. Taylor, fun to do. Taylor, are you going to go with the birds? I'm going to do more. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've, got, I've got bird. i got a whole uh, bunch of ideas. It won't all be birds. You know, primates are pretty good, too. But uh, I'll I'll be doing more bird stuff. That's great. And and, yeah. and Magnelli had had his little, Magnelli had, had his his birds. Well, of course, Oliver had his little uh, penguin. Yeah, yeah, but Mag, but Magnelli had a, a daily strip. Uh, oh yes, yes, uh, oh yes, right, yes, shoe. With, uh, yeah, shoe. It was mm -hmm. called. Yes, that's right. That's right. So maybe it's uh, for you, Taylor. Maybe <laughs> it's time to pick I've, up something you know, new and be. The most important cartoonist well, in the in the United <laughs> States. You know, to be to be serious about it, with that is that, you know, I don't I don't do I don't do as much day to day political things for Kegel, and especially since I I'm not with El Nuevo Dia anymore. Uh, that then and the things I do for Hoover Digest, the only problem is that 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 stuff is done way in advance. Now, some of those illustrations, cartoons, yeah. they have a pretty long shelf life. But there's others that yeah. I know that I yeah, I can't do this now, or maybe something five years from now. Was, oh, I can use this again. Yeah. But but uh, uh, the thing about it, I've done a I've done a bunch of nature cartoons for Daryl, mostly centering centering on birds, but not all of them. But doing it on birds allows me to kind of do it anytime, any anywhere, you know, and and uh, where I don't have to be because what I find myself is I'm 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 not as quick on the draw anymore when it comes to a lot of day-to-day -day political commentary. And, and, and because the news cycle is so fast and continuous that the stuff becomes all hat, you know? And uh, so, yeah, I think I should do this, Daryl. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, very good. And, 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 it should, I'm looking forward and, and to it. Nobody is. Donald Duck, Mickey Mouse, the old, the old <laughs> French, the, 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 all, all animals. Well, I'm only 35 I, miles from Disney World, so. The, I, I don't know any <laughs> editorial cartoonist who's ever, ever done it entirely with animals or particular well, characters like that. Well, there are so many, so many topics that last forever. I mean, the, the, what the actuality, what happens is one, but there are always also things between left and right or, or about religion or, oh no, you don't want religion. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but uh, about a lot of things that last forever. Well, you know, American cartoonists, have this trope of the old couple watching the TV and yeah, they, okay. they can comment on anything in the news and you don't really have yeah, to draw it because it's yeah. on TV and you know, they're commenting on it. And I do a lot of those with, you know, a little to my shame uh, because they're so easy. And I actually draw it with the back of the TV because I don't have to draw what's on the TV and that makes it even lazier. Um, but you know, all of those, right. all of those could be birds talking to each other. Yeah. They don't have to have the TV. Yeah. They just talk yeah. about the. They could. No, they could I, I be birds to, watching TV. In case, it's in, since since uh, and Yope haven't seen any of these, these are pretty fair, realistic. I mean, they're meant to be funny, but but you know, I I uh, uh, I'm a long time interested in 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 you know 
all kinds of things in nature. And, and uh, so I enjoy, I enjoy uh, drawing them well. And, and uh, I don't, I have a better feel for birds for whatever reason. You know, I, I, I spend a lot of time, I've got this extensive butterfly garden, but insects are hard to draw uh, for me. Uh, I don't really, I'm not very mechanically inclined. And my feeling is that someone who can draw, if you can draw like a racing motorcycle really well, I mean, really, really well, you can draw insects well. I have trouble with a lot of machinery and that makes insects, uh, <laughs> uh, birds, it's just something I, I don't know. I, I, I have a more, a better feel for them, birds and primates than, than a lot of other animals. Yeah, there are a lot of English guys who draw birds fantastically yeah. and, and very fast. And, and yeah. uh, I admire that because that's not my style either. Thank you, Daryl, for yes. everything. Gentlemen, it was very nice was having great. you. And we'll, we'll have an extra episode of us just chatting, and that will be charming. Well, that'd be and, good. Uh, no, it be I'd great. certainly enjoyed it. And again, thank you for inviting, including me. And um, great to meet you, Jos and Jop. Yep. And thank you, everybody, for thank joining you. us for our, our extra chat after our Putin Part 2 podcast. And uh, remember to subscribe to the KegelCast wherever you go. Uh, subscribe, subscribe. And uh, thank you for being here. And uh, we will see you next time. See you later, gentlemen. Bye-bye. See you later.